What up, everybody, and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz, and I talk about blades, and today we're going to touch on a subject that is in and of itself very touchy, and that is uh, the subject of buying USA-made product versus Chinese product, specifically in the knife enthusiast community. And this is not so much about what you buy. Because Baz on Blades is not here to tell you what to buy. I don't care what you buy, how you spend your money, where it's made, how much it costs, what color it is. I don't care. I am only here to show the knives that I show, give reviews on them, and it's your decision whether or not to buy them. My personal stance right now in the first half of 2020 Everybody, not only America, but all of these other countries that have been so affected economically by the 2020 pandemic panic, uh, they should be thinking about making and buying and employing at home. So what Bass on Blades is personally doing is, if there is a product, type of product that I want, I look to see if there is an American-made option. If there is an American-made option that I can afford, I will buy American first. If there is an American-made option that I cannot afford, I can't afford it. So I have to buy what I can afford. If there is an option uh, or if there is an item that there is no American-made competitive option, then I have to buy the most competitive option for my investment. And... Uh, what you guys see in front of you right now, this is a, a disassembled custom knife made in America by Americans. This is a Crawford Custom Knives Casper Folding Fighter. And I have had this knife since 2008, and I'm going to show you guys some things on it that I just think are incredible examples of of American knife making art. Now this is not an art piece. It's not a complex piece. It's a titanium frame lock on um, bronze bushings and it's screwed together with Torx hardware. Um, see I had this made in 2008 so the blade still is S30V uh, because S30V was hot in 2008. So uh, Let's talk about a couple of those scenarios I mentioned earlier with American-made options versus Chinese-made options. And um, if I want, say I want to buy, I want to buy a Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Well, Baz on Blades, what do you do when you want to buy a Spyderco Paramilitary 2? Well, you run right over to DH Gate and you get a $10 clone, right? Hell no. Baz on Blades doesn't do that. Baz on Blades buys a Spyderco Paramilitary 2 because at $159 for this knife when I bought it, this being the Blurple S110V version, I thought it was a good deal. It was a good enough deal to buy the knife and I wanted a Paramilitary 2. Hence, I bought an actual paramilitary too. So, there you go. If you go out and you buy a clone of a paramilitary too, it's your business. But Baz on Blades doesn't do that. I'm not going to tell you if you're right or wrong. I only have my personal beliefs and I'm not here to tell you what to do. Another scenario is, there is no competitive American option for the type of knife that I want to buy. And I'm going to show you an example of that right now. And that is the Civivi made. Civivi, okay. Chinese made. The rustic gent in their, in their uh, stainless Damascus. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you right now. For a three inch gentleman's lock back... There is no American-made competition for this knife. There is none. And if, uh, if you think you have something, then tell me about it. I'll go buy one. But for under $100 to get stainless Damascus 
phosphor phosphor bronze bushings this level of fit and finish beautiful materials that are unique in the micarta uh com, you know combined with carbon fiber a uh, good hardware um it's just it's just an awesome awesome knife there's nothing made by an american company that even compares to this product please do not go into the comment section oops and tell me I should have bought a buck 110 or 112. Um, I, I wouldn't buy a buck 110. In fact, I just wouldn't buy a buck 110, guys. Um, I, I don't care anything for them. I don't care anything for buck knives. And if you think that a, a buck made lockback is as well made as this knife, you're insane. It's not, guys. I, there, there's no reason to pretend that it is. At this price point, there was no American-made competitor, so I bought this Chinese knife. That's just the way it is. It's not good or bad. It's just the way it is. Uh, you could say, well, Baz on Blades, you could have had an American custom maker make you a knife just like that for $800. Well, yes, I could have. I absolutely could have. It would have been an even better knife. The one fatal flaw to that is there's no way Baz on Blades is going to have $800 to buy a custom knife. There's no way. I'm not going to save it up. I'm just not going to spend that much. I'm not going to even try to. I don't even care to spend that much. That's just the way it is, guys. So it's not a white and black situation. There are nuances to everything and you know my position i've already stated in this video now bows on blades what brought this up well what brought this up and we're going to start working on this casper here we're going to put it together but i want to finish this whole uh usa uh versus china thing what brought this up was i was on instagram and i came across a custom maker who shall remain nameless because he didn't do anything wrong I don't want to call somebody out for over nothing, but he had a knife design and he found something that could very well be a copy of his design. Now, was it an exact copy and a clone? No, it wasn't. It had the general profile of the handle, the general profile of the blade. Uh, the blade grinds were not the same. The handle treatment was not the same, but it could have been his design. And he was railing on that. And as a custom maker, he has the right to do that, okay? In some minds, those people are taking money out of his pocket. They very well could be. I don't know. Um, but the thing that um, made me laugh was not that he was outraged that somebody may have copied his design, but that when you go down in the comment section, there was comment after comment after comment that was anti-Chinese commenting chinese are thieves chinese steal your ideas china 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 there wasn't one comment about this custom maker who just a few months ago was having much of his product line made in china not that that's good or bad i don't care it's his business and the product was a, a fine product there ain't nothing wrong with that but the thing is, down in the comment section, people were just bashing on China, and nobody stopped to think that the comment section of the maker they were commenting on, the maker had previously, and I think currently has, product made in China. Now, this comment, or the maker, didn't say anything about China, really. He just said he, he was tired of being ripped off. And you know what? That's okay. Um, but the people that would drop down in his comment section and just start exclusively talking about China, 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 they ended up, to me, looking like a bunch of idiots because they're commenting with a maker that has part of his product line made in China. And it made me laugh. It made me laugh. That's how ridiculous this is. It is total white and black. You're right. I'm wrong, you're wrong, I'm right, period, no middle ground. You know what it sounds like to me? A bunch of stupid fucking politics. 
If that's the type of person you want to be, you're probably better suited to the political realm rather than the knife enthusiast world. Um, just guys, think about what you do before you say something. And remember, your beliefs are your beliefs. End of that. Let's take a look at this. This um, Crawford made Casper Fold and Fighter, one of my f most, it is probably my favorite fold and fighter design period it is a classic this one was uh, made for me by uh, Wes uh, because Pat had at that time had already semi-retired and Wes was doing most of the regular work in the shop and he did fine fine work here guys um, I want you to take a look at this I want you to see I'm going to try to catch it all all the snail trails all of everything that's rubbed uh, from the bead blast to a shiny finish on this. Um, guys, I carried this knife every day, day in and day out, this custom-made knife. Look, see these scratches here on the inside? This is from a time that I disassembled this knife while at work, and it had so much sweat built up in it and dried. There was like ridges of sweat in it from where I worked that job. Look at the bushings here, the swirl on the bushings. You know what that's from? That is from steel dust in my pocket being trapped in the lubricant of the bushings and riding on those softer phosphor bronze bushings, which, take a look at these guys. Um, you ever seen a knife done like this? That bushing is pressed. It is not a washer. It is like a pillar bushing build. It is pressed in place, guys. I think it's pinned in place. I, I think it is. I, I've never, I don't know about that, but it looks like it's pinned in place. Uh, there are so many little refined um, uh, things in the inside of this knife. Look at this. Look at that uh, detent ramp there, guys. It is perfect. It rolls. It's like butter, the detent rolling up over the, the tang of the blade. It is, I mean, this is not ground by a machine, guys. It's made by human hands in a shop. And um, another thing is, let's take a look at the back here. That's the front. I'm sorry. We'll get the back here. Look down. You see that cut that's on the inside of the pivot hole, all right? That is to retain the pivot, which we'll look at right here. The pivot has a pin that is welded to it and then machined down to, to fit in that recess, and that is what retains that pin. That's not a pre-bought D-shaped uh, generic pivot there guys it's it's they actually did that by hand in the shop uh what a unique uh fix to that issue guys the uh the stop pin is pressed in on the lock side and of course this is all this was pressed and then the final bead blast finish was done and it is absolutely it is so absolutely smooth even when my fingernail i can't even tell that that's two different pieces of metal that is two different pieces of metal and it is um it is hands down the best fitting of that type i've ever seen in my life uh everything about this uh we've got a steel backspacer here that gives this a little this knife a little weight on the butt end to help balance it as a folding fighter. Uh, it is crisply, perfectly crisply finished on these edges to where when it is mounted and this knife is put together, it is perfectly flush as far as a backspacer goes. You've got what I consider to be one of the most classic and utilitarian pocket clip designs. Who hasn't used this? Zero Tolerance, Kershaw has used it, Benchmade has used a pocket clip like this for decades. Um, good Lord, who else? Emerson Knives uses a pocket clip like this. It's not fancy, but 
God almighty, that is a good, good pocket clip design. All of the hardware on this knife, you know, it, it, the finish is done to match the knife in a bead blast, but it's all quality hardware deeply and tightly socketed. It's not even the small T6 screws for the pocket clip. Look how deeply they're socketed. Uh, it is a very, very good hardware. No issue at all with getting that back together. Now, let's see what we're going to do here. Let's see what we're going to do here. Let's fit this. And, of course, it's got that welded arm pin. We're going to have to turn it until that seats. There we go. Got that seated in there, guys. We're going to re-oil these bushings. Doesn't take much. Doesn't take much at all. That's enough. We'll seat that blade. Seat that blade. I am going to go ahead and put some oil on that bushing there, guys. We're going to place this backspacer the best we can by hand. We don't have to worry about the stop pin because it's pressed in on one side. And we will take this. All right, come on guys, get in there, there we go. Very tight tolerances. Let's line up this backspacer here. Oops, didn't line it up at all, did I? All right, please forgive me guys if I seem awkward, I'm in front of a camera. I've got stage fright, performance anxiety. You know how that is, performance anxiety, guys. Don't let it get you down. It happens to everybody. All right. We're going to get one of those started as a locator. And then we will get these other body screws in there in the correct place. Make sure that everything is lined up. Let me get that back more centered for the camera get those started guys we're going to come back with our t10 it's a t10 pivot guys um come back with it and we will get it started now you notice i didn't put any thread lock on this knife um the reason is is i've never had an issue with this knife guys uh, as far as things backing out, I uh, let the pivot turn. There we go. Sorry, guys. I let that get up off there, and it jumped off of that detent for the pivot. All right. So, I never had any issues with any of the screws backing out of this. Um, I, I don't know that it's ever been Loctited. I don't, I don't even remember if Wes Loctited it. Uh, when it was brand new, and let's see here, I want to make sure that that backspacer is flush. Go in the center there, then we'll go with this end, we'll come up here, and we're just going to rock back and forth on these uh, T6 screws, torquing them incrementally, guys much like you would the uh, lug nuts on your car wheel. You don't just go and randomly tighten them down all the way one at a time. Uh, that's necessary with small hardware like this to keep from stripping it out. Those are the original screws. I had this knife built in 2008, and that is T6 hardware. Um, that's how long T6 hardware, quality T6 hardware, will last you if you are cautious with it. Right back to center. Oh, got it a little too tight, guys. Sorry. Got it a little too tight. There we go. All right. Now, the only thing that I notice, I've got a little bit of lock stick, and it's that sort of grady, gravelly, um, uh, 
sort of feeling that you get on a lock face of a titanium frame lock that has been uh, carbidized. And that's what they did with this. It's carbidized uh, with, you know, carbides welded onto that surface because the titanium is softer than the steel that it's locking against. And that's why in 2020 we have hardened lock face inserts on everything. Even cheap knives have hardened lock face inserts on them. And uh, back in the day, they didn't do that. Um, so that's what you see here. Another thing back in the day was tip down carry was a little more popular. Um, I, you know, if I was a company, I wouldn't dare bring out a knife that was tip down carry in 2020, guys. I, I just wouldn't do it. Uh, not only because I personally dislike it myself. Oh, come on. Oh, this little hardware. And I've got to do this without being able to edit. So you're going to see all of this, guys. There we go. Got one started. All right. Anyway, um, you know, this whole American versus Chinese, uh, the things that I just showed you on the inside of this knife uh, could have been good old American innovation or it could have been done uh, 50 years ago by a German knife maker. Uh, it could have been done by, um, you know, a, a Chinese knife maker. I, I hate to tell you this, guys. I was doing a little research yesterday. Very little, actually. I just checked Wikipedia. And it looks like the Chinese have been dealing in steel, high-carbon steel, and were rated as competitive to Woots style high carbon steel uh, probably 360 BC 360 BC that's 360 years before we have started our current time frame which is in 2020 okay um that means the Chinese have been working with steel, high carbon steel, for over 1,500 years, guys. Over 1,500 years. Uh, I think they can probably handle making steel um, just as well as Americans can, uh, Europeans can. Uh, I mean, good Lord, uh, the Chinese were compared to um, India and Rome, okay? Uh, those were the hot spots, I believe. I believe, I know the second one was Rome. I can't remember if the third one was India or not. But in that time frame, 360 years BC, um, you know, the Chinese were world-renowned for their high-carbon steel. Uh, the United States has not been around for 1,500 years, guys. Uh, please, 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 please think about what you're going to say before you say it. Um, I, you know what? I don't want the knife enthusiast world to turn into the political world. I'm so tired of both sides of politics doing whatever they can to manipulate the common people, and it's spilling over into every other respect of life. It's okay now to instantly start bashing the Chinese without even knowing what you're talking about. You know what? They are people too. The things that you hate about China have nothing, nothing to do with the people. You think those people want to live the way they do. I mean, sir, that is a serious question. Do you think those people want to live the way they do? Do you think they can do anything about it? They are a totally unarmed uh, people. They are unarmed. Only military and police have firearms in China, period. Those people don't stand a chance. And the only thing that the rest of the world can do is hate on them for everything. Does Bazon Blades have something against the Chinese government? Yes, 
they are a bunch of oh my god you don't even want to get me started i'm gonna start using a bunch of profanity and i don't want to the chinese government if everybody in the chinese government just instantly died one day and the people took over i wouldn't shed a tear i would not shed a tear but i don't hate the chinese people and you know what they've got to eat too they've got to work in those factories those Chinese people working in factories are just like baths on blades working in a factory. Just like the people that are your friends, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your wife, your husband, whatever, that are working in factories. It's the same thing. Do you want everybody around the world to hate them because of what their government does? It's, it's not black and white. It's not black and white. And I think that uh, taking a look at this knife, guys, it centers me in what I think of this. The things that I said at the beginning of the video. I have this fine, fine example of a handmade, custom, American-made knife in front of me. And I am able to appreciate it and appreciate the people that made it and support those people. And at the same time, as a human being, I am able to understand the complexity, okay, complexity of the Chinese versus American conundrum. Do what you can to support America, people. Uh, right now, it's our mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives that are struggling right now. Let's help them out if we can. If you can't, there's no competitive product or you can't afford the competitive product or whatever. There's, uh, there's no guilt trip. There's no guilt to it. You are trying to do the best you can in a very complex and expensive world that we live in. We literally, everything we buy, we have to compare prices. That is just how regular people live. You do the best you can. All right. Please, please, please get it through your mind that Bazon Blades is not telling you how to live, and I don't want other people telling me how to live, and I don't tell people how to live on my channel. Do your best. Follow your conscience. Be a good person, and be as supportive as you can as a human being. As always, guys, I thank you for taking the time to watch one of my videos. What a beautiful knife from Pat and Wes uh, Crawford from Crawford Custom Knives. Show them some love, please. They are awesome. And um, just God bless all of you. And we will talk to you again.